because you ain't dead yet. None of us is dead yet. We're still fighting, aren't we? It's a constant battle for death, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Is anybody in want? Whatever it is you want, is it what he wants? <laughs> Whatever you want, is it what he wants? That's always the question. Lord, this is what I want, but is it what you want? Well, I want this, this, and that, but is it what you want? You know, there's an old Janis Joplin song. He's, she's singing, oh, Lord, buy me a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> she died of heroin. Hallelujah. See, there's a carnal attitude, and then there's the attitude of Christ in everything we do. There's motives of Christ, and then there's motives of the fallen nature. We battle those things all the time. And the time that we are in right now in this transitional time, it's called a dispensational season. It's called a what? Dispensational season. Dispensational is associated with the, it's a group of, it's an area where it's a time predestined, specified by God Almighty. We call it, right now we are in the age of grace called the dispensational age of grace. It has to do with a time and seasons and sequences that he is predestined for a divine purpose. Right now we are in a dispensational season, which is a transition. In Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Where? In Christ. So if you're not in Christ, are you blessed in these spiritual places? Heck no. You know, this may sound strange, but there are people who call themselves believers that are not in Christ. They might have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but to be in Christ, he must be your Lord. Amen? Does everybody understand it? There is a difference. There's a difference. Because a true believer is one who follows. A true believer maintains a thirst and hunger. A true believer loves his presence. A true believer loves his truth. Other than that, that person is not a believer. They maybe want to be a wannabe, but they ain't made it yet. Amen? So in this, he says in verse 4, Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So remember, God's not bound by space and time. He is, always was, and always will be. So he already predestined us to be here at a specific time right now. Right now. He chose you before the universe was created to be here right now. To come out of the world, to get rescued that you may be an extension of his love, power, and truth and rescue us from hell. Because there is no unbeliever in hell. Everyone that's there now is a believer. But it's too late. There's no escape. In verse 5, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. It's his good pleasure. It's his will. Amen. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, 
which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together an one and all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. We are joint heirs, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we should first, we who first trusted in Christ, should be to the praise of his glory. Now, this is powerful. And every season, every season is marked by a beginning and an end. Amen? And, and there's a specific or particular time in multiple opportunities to accomplish a predestined agenda in a season. I'll say that again. Every season is marked off by a beginning and an end in a particular time with multiple opportunities to accomplish a predestined agenda. And this predestined agenda is to aid to your calling, purpose, and destiny. In other words, God has predestined certain things for you to grab hold of. It's like if you were to go into a library, there's books that were predestined for you to read so that you can grasp because it will assist you in your calling, your purpose, and your destiny. And one of the things that begins to happen this is accomplished by your cooperation. So if you're not willing to cooperate, you're going to miss it. Amen? This is all influenced by divine influence for you. That's where the Spirit leads us. Amen? Sometimes he's got to kick us, but, you know, praise God. But it's always resisted by demonic influence. Now, a dispensation involves multiple seasons and times gathered together to accomplish a divine purpose. It's done in a designated time, what we call age. Is everybody okay? Okay. Every dispensation has an age of time with multiple seasons to fulfill a divine purpose. So we just talked about an area of season, amen, an age, and dispensational. Dispensational are things, in other words, you have specific seasons that are personal. It's for your growth, amen. When it has to do with dispensation, it has to do with global, complete body, God's universe, all of his creations. Dispensation is a divine purpose for everything. Does everybody understand it? Why? Because we are in a dispensation of the age of grace, which we know is coming to an end. It's coming to a what? An end. Now, grace is God's plan to escape, isn't it? So we know that the plan of God to escape hell is coming to an end. That's pretty frightening. In other words, if you don't make it in that period of time, you're gone. You're done. It's over with. Once the age of grace is ended, it's over with. Because it's no longer a plan of escape. Does everybody understand that? Think about this. This is serious. And this is where many people are not taking salvation seriously. Yeah, I accepted Jesus a few years ago. Then I'm just going to do what I want to do. That's nice. Then you are not his. Well, no, I've been going to this church that tells me I'm saved all the time. Well, you're an idiot. Because that's a lie from hell. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Bottom line, that's that. So in this, we've got to come to an understanding of where our influence is coming from. Amen. And when that influence comes, does it line up with what God says? See, so many times people are still taking an influence 
but it ain't God. Now, it may sound godly. <laughs> it may look godly. But if it's not God's time, is it godly? No. See, the enemy is always trying to push us out of a time so that we pick up other things and it distracts us. So we miss our season and a dispensational season. You have a specific season that God has called you to grow. Each season has specific things predestined for me and you to learn, to grow, to mature, to come to the end of self, to learn God's voice, to know his unctions, to know how to be led by him, to know the things that please him, displease him, and to know God's time. Vital. Because if you don't know God's time, you don't know him. That's where we're to walk in time, in sequence with him. In Ephesians 3. Dispensational season. Again, when it's dispensational, it has to do with God's divine purpose for the body, for the universe, and for all of creation. So in this season that we're in, we call it a transition. I mean, you can see it's globally, right? <laughs> There's a global plague, but it's a lie. You know that everybody has coronavirus? It's one of the strains of a virus. Does everybody get it? So everybody's had it. When you got the flu, it was a part of coronavirus. Although you didn't get drunk, you were fine. So everybody goes through a virus. Look at, they have tests now that test any virus as coronavirus. But then there's a specific, or a specific virus. It's a COVID-19, whatever it is, COVID-19. That's another strain. It's stronger. But if you were to go take their test, almost everybody would fail it, saying you got coronavirus. But this is how they are putting bondage. This is how creating fear. Again, I can't tell you how many places are really empty. Hospitals, empty. Yeah, there's a few sick people there. People are dying of cancer and are blaming it on coronavirus. This is happening globally. Italy, everywhere, all over the world because they're trying to promote something to prevent God's divine intervention in this dispensational season. Does everybody get it? Because this is a season of transition, a turning over. And we want to be a part of it. But yes, we have our own personal seasons for growing and maturing. Amen? But you got to cooperate. Without cooperation, you don't get nowhere. Listen, you pull up to a gas pump, you want to get it filled? You got to get out of your car. Or some your passenger does. But you still got to put a charge card or pay for it before you get it. That price is called cooperation. Amen? Nothing comes for nothing. Ephesians 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, joint heirs of the same body and partakers of his promises in Christ through the gospel, through the message of his promises. 
of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace, of which given God given of God given to me by the effect of working of his power. To me, who am least than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Made known by who? Who is the church? We are. By the church. That's phenomenal. I love it. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which is from the beginning of the ages, has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God may be, may be known, made known by the church to the principalities to the, and the powers in the heavenly places and according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord, and whom we have boldness and access with all confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in your, where? your inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and that you may be filled with the fullness of God. That you may be what? Filled with the fullness of God. So we are joint heirs of Christ. We are partakers of his promises through the message that was recorded of the events and eyewitnesses of while Jesus was here on the earth. And then by the Spirit, after Jesus left. Amen? This is the manifold power of Christ in me and you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Again, being in Christ means you're strong. See, in Christ is not weakness. It is strength. It is an anointing. It is the power of God Almighty. That allows you to overcome anything. The first thing is you. You must overcome you. Yourself. Amen. The devil sometimes doesn't have anything to do with it. He's just standing back eating popcorn while he's watching the movie you're making. Woe is me. Why me? You know, you think about it. How many times have people become rebellious? Because they didn't get what they wanted. Oh, you poor little thing. It's a good day to die. You don't gain anything without a price. Nothing. Nothing comes without a price. And that price is first denying yourself. That's the first part of it. But this is what I want, but this is what God wants. But this is what I feel. Is that what God feels? See, there's that constant exchange. And if we're not constantly exchanging our presence for his, we're always going to have trouble. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 24, dispensational season. Matthew 24. And we have gone over some of this before, but... I think we need to be refreshed on some of this, especially the understanding of dispensational season. Remember, a dispensation, anything associated with dispensation is large. It's global. It's universal. But again, there's dispensation season, and there's your personal seasons. In Matthew 24, verse 3, now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the what? The age of what? Age of grace. Age of escape. 
God's plan. When's it going to end? When is, is going to be completed where you can't escape no more but to access the wrath of God? And he said to them, Take heed. Be careful what you hear. Be careful of what you agree. Be careful of what you're drawing from. Be careful that no one deceives you or nothing deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deliver and deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and these will be, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, and these will be the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up, or attempt to deliver you up. You will go from the beginning of sorrows to tribulation. And will kill you. They will attempt to kill you. And, they, and they, you will be hated by nations for my name's sake. And many will be offended. And betray one another. And will hate one another. That many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end. There's that place of endurance. That means there's a price to pay will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the house stop not go, not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe without eternity to those who are, who are pregnant and those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may be in the winter or in the Sabbath. For then there will be what? Great tribulation. So there will be tribulation. There's going to be the beginning of sorrows. There will be tribulation and then great tribulation. As such has not been seen since the beginning of of the world until this time no and never shall be again think about this in other words all these wars nuclear things that have happened all these disasters everything will not be near compared to the great tribulation hailstorms worth hundreds of pounds coming from the heavens stars falling Earthquakes, a third of mankind being destroyed, a third of the waters being destroyed, a third of everything being destroyed on the earth. Think about that. It's going to be a hell of a time on earth before they go to hell. Oh, hallelujah. In this dispensational season, right now, what God is doing is he's exposing, right? And he's convicting. We see the beginning of sours, birth pains, tribulation, and great tribulation. These are actually three dispensational events of time. And they are accomplishing a completed dispensational age. So all of this is associated in a dispensational age. We are entering the dispensational season with a designated time to accomplish a divine purpose. And this divine pur purpose is to position his people. We are to be positioned spiritually and physically. And what's it for? For the rescue an enormous harvest. In Matthew 25,
in verse 1. It says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Why are they called virgins? Because they've been washed by the blood of Christ. It doesn't matter what you've done before. And once you've repented, you are considered a virgin. Now five of them were wise and five stupid or foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, they forsook to assemble. Why? Because they didn't get the oil. I'm okay. I know Jesus. He knows me. I have the word. Yeah, well, you weren't backed by the anointing. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, again, while the bridegroom was delayed, they all stumbled, or they all slumbled and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. Go rather to those who sell and go buy for yourself. In other words, there were those who were worshipers and those who were not. Again, this comes by worship. It is a humble state of being. If you can't worship, you ain't getting nothing. You got a Savior that says, come and learn from me. Come. But if you can't learn to worship and surrender yourself and humble yourself, you will never be empowered. It just doesn't work that way. Why? Because worship is a level and a state of Humbleness, humility. See, one of the things that kills all of this is pride. It kills everything. Pride kills it all. Why? Because what does pride do? It fights for itself. Never learns to surrender. Doesn't want to surrender. Pride is mankind's killer. That's how it started. That's how it moved. That's how it happened in the garden. That's what happened with the fallen angels. That's what happened. Pride. Fighting for their lives. He says here, okay, but the wise answered and said, no, you got to go by yourself. So while the dummies went out to go by, because they refused to humble themselves and get in God's presence, amen, and be filled, well, I know the word. Yeah, but you're not backed by the word. You may know the word, but the anointing must back you. That's why people go in cycles all the time. Because they, they think they're okay. That's their pride. None of us is okay. Turn your neighbor and say, you ain't okay. <laughs> None of us is okay. I don't care who you are. I don't care with miracles. I don't care if you go out and raise the dead. You're still not okay. Does everybody get this? This is how pride comes in. I got it. Oh, yeah, you got it. You're going to get it. And I believe right now God is crushing pride in the body of Christ. He's crushing it. He's saying, you can't, I, I can't use you with that. He is crushing pride. What happens after? So the, he tells them, and so the, the ones that were foolish, they, they went out to buy. The bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him. To the wedding, the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Why did they go to him and say, Lord, Lord, open? Because they thought they were okay. They thought they were okay. But they were full of pride. But he answered and said to him, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. God doesn't know pride. He knows humility. He knows humbleness. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. In this dispensational season, again, he's exposing and convicting those who are lukewarm, unstable, and disconnected to the anointing in hope to get them back into position and become lovers of his presence. 
2 Timothy 3. Reminder, refreshing, and encouragement today. Praise God. Pride. Personal reverence into the deadly end. Now, pride and fear go together. Amen? Amen. Most people are afraid that they find out how prideful they are. Second Timothy ver chapter three verse one. But know this that in the last days perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? My goodness, are there perilous times? Are we in one right now? Yes. For men will become lovers of themselves. When anybody's a lover of themselves, are they prideful? Amen. Lovers of money, lovers, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. And for this sort are those who creep into households and keep and make uh, captives of gullible men and women loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts and desires. They're always learning and are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? No anointing. You know, you can have gifts with no power. Gifts and no power. What is the power for? To overcome. It's to what? overcome that's why we're anointed we are to have the power to overcome overcome what anything always knowing it's going to work to the good no matter what's going on the devil's got a plan but god's plan is bigger hallelujah now <laughs> As we looked at these areas of traitors, headstrong, lovers, proud, blasphemers, you, you know what? You don't have to fulfill all of those to be disconnected, just one of them. It only takes one of them to be disconnected, to be unplugged. And what God is trying to do is get us unplugged from the world and from this religious state of being of pride, because religion is nothing but pride, into a relationship. Into a relationship where you know who you are, who he is, where it's a son daughter, son, uh, father daughter, father son relationship. Where you're walking in love. Pride and fear are assassins of your destiny. They're what? Assassins of your destiny. In 1 Peter chapter 5, dispensational season. Hallelujah. In verse 5, 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger people. Now, younger, of course, has nothing to do with age. Amen? It's maturity. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humbleness. For God resists the proud. You want to have access and fellowship with God? You know, that, that's the question. How bad do we want a relationship with the Creator? If you want a relationship with the Creator, you're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to start looking at what you want in exchange for what He wants. He says, 
but God, he, God resists the pride, the proudful, but gives grace. In other words, that plan of escape he gives to the humble. So the ones that are prideful well, don't get a, a way of escape. They always fall into bondage. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. It says, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Everyone say, resist him. Steadfast in the faith that is in your connection, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So everybody goes through it. It doesn't matter where you've been. Remember, the enemy's always, pride is always going to try to come. The enemy's always going to try you to influence you, to tell you you're okay. I'm all right. Compromise it. See, pride welcomes evil. Humility welcomes righteousness. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may kill, devour, destroy. You know, many people don't even believe in any of this. They don't even believe in the devil. In fact, they don't even believe in the Word of God. There are believers, that's so-called believers, that still don't believe the Word of God. Oh, I believe in Jesus, but I just don't believe the Bible. I'm telling you, I, I, I talk to many of them. It's amazing to me. I don't believe the Bible, but I believe in Jesus. Well, how can you believe in Jesus without believing in the Bible? It makes no sense because they're full of pride. Number one, people don't want to know the Bible because then they have to do with this, what's pleasing to God. You know what it says? If I don't know about it, I'm not accountable for it. You're accountable whether you know or not. You can't get in front of God and say, well, I just didn't know. Believe me, he's going to bring you a whole movie projector out and show you all the opportunities you had. Then he says, depart. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11. How many chances do we need to get it? Proverbs 11. <laughs> Another funny thing, I, I run into people and I haven't seen them in a long time. And, hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. The first thing they want to always tell you is that they got a job. I'm making money. Okay, that's doing good, huh? Were you in fellowship? Oh, no, man, I, I watch TV evangelists. <laughs> You're an idiot, too. Yeah, I'm doing great. I got a job. I got this. I got that. You ain't got nothing. It's going to be taken anyways. You're going to lose every bit of it again and go back into that cycle over and over and over until you hit that wall, the bushes, and our car runs you over or something. And then, oh, God, everybody calls on Jesus when they're lost everything. But thank he's the only one that doesn't turn his back because everybody else, I burned every bridge there was. But Jesus didn't turn his back on me. I never realized he was always there waiting for me to surrender, saying, learn, come on, learn. Come on, learn. Learn from me. Come on, learn from me. Come on, I'll take you under my wing. I'll feed you. I'll show you. I'll teach you. Come on, let's do it. Nah, I'm all right. Poof, there comes another truck. I had tire tracks on my body for years. Proverbs 11, verse 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes what? Shame. But with the humble is what? Wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. 
but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. You can't buy your way out when God's wrath comes. But righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. Whoa. Pride brings dishonor before God. And honor before men. Does everybody get this? The world loves pride. Oh, they're proud of everything they do. Humility brings weakness before men, but brings honor before God. The word says, Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for his righteousness, so they shall be what? Filled, empowered to what? Overcome. Proverbs 16. Oh, hallelujah. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Sixteen, sixteen. Everybody there? Proverbs sixteen, verse sixteen. Let's speak it. How much better to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lonely than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Again, God is crushing his body. He's crushing his body of pride. And he's crushing humanity of rebellion. Because humanity doesn't understand pride. They think they're good people. I'm a good person. Good people are full of pride. Again, God is crushing the body Amen? Of prideness. But he's crushing humanity of rebellion. People don't, right now, people don't even know, understand why, it, why they are the way they are. Why, they're, why is this happening to me? They're trying to look at it. I, I've been a good person. I don't understand. Why am I plagued? Oh, I must have. See, they're thinking carnally. They're thinking worldly. The word says this, he who dwells in the secret place, no plague's going to touch you. No plague or pestilence shall harm you. I didn't say you wouldn't get a sniffle or a sneeze. It doesn't mean you're plagued. Amen? It doesn't mean that you're going to walk into a wall and bump your head. You know, and, and something's wrong with you. You might be a little blind. I don't know. But. but again, you know, living in the world, you go through stuff. And you can't blame everything on the devil. <laughs> or the government or anyone else. We have to take responsibility. We have power to choose. And we have power to overcome if you're connected. If you're staying filled, if you're staying dressed, if you're staying possessed with Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah 28. These are challenging times right now. I love it.
You know, there isn't anything greater than watching the hand of God move. Sometimes he moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> I think sometimes he moves with his for front hand reaching out, then his back hand, come on, snap up, tighten up, let's get it right. Right now he's chastening. Everything is being chastened, convicted. Why? Because he's trying to prevent people from falling under his wrath. Amen? As a father loves his children, he chastens them. He corrects them. And he said, nobody goes without it. Isaiah 28, verse 1. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, without eternity. Whoa. Whoa to the what? Crown of what? Pride. Boy, there's a lot of people wearing that crown, man. I'm telling you. To the drunkards of Ephraim, they are drunk on pride. Whose glorious beauty is fading, who is the fading flower, which is at the head of the Vernon Valleys. To those who are overcome with wine, behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one. Like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm. Like a flood of mighty waters overflowing. Who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, will be trampled underfoot. And a glorious beauty is fading as a fading flower. Which is at the head of the Vernon Valley. Like the first fruit before the summer. Which an observer sees. He eats it up while it is still in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be for the crown of glory and a diadem of beauty, the remnant of his people. For the spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for the strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Powerful. But they also have erred, erred their, through wine through and through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are all swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through t intoxicating drink. Their error in vision, they stumble in judgment, for all tables are full of vomit and filth. No place is clean. No place is clean. He's warning us. Look at it. It's not just about alcohol and wine. It's about drugs. It's about medications. Why? People are getting drunk. They're getting intoxicated. They're getting intoxicated by TV programs and music. They're getting intoxicated by all kinds of things of the world. And they're missing what God is trying to bring them to. They're so caught up in themselves and in pride, they're intoxicated. And they become toxic. Amen? There's your contamination. Pride. Romans 1. They carry the crown of pride. And what do they draw from? The well of deception. Romans 1. Is everybody okay? Verse 16. Oh, happy days. Glory. Romans 1, 16. Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who what? Now, what's the word believe me? Follow. So it's the power to those who what? Follow. For the Jews first and also for the Greeks, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written to just live by what? Faith. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifested in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world is invisible, attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Nobody gets away with it. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were dark, and professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the loss of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Again, the just live by faith. Why? Because they're in relationship and connection with the Father, by the Spirit, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Everything's about being in Christ. See, there are so-called believers that are really not in Christ. They're out of Christ. Does everybody understand that? Until Christ becomes your Lord, you're out of Christ. That means you are serving Him. You are fellowshipping with Him. You no longer have a life. He is your life. Now you're in Christ. That's where old things pass away and all things become new. Everybody has an opportunity, even when you first become a believer. Amen? You enter the outer court, and God is making way for the holy place and the most holy place. It doesn't mean you live in the outer court. That's Savior. Christ is in the holy place. He's not in the outer court. He's paid the price in the outer court. But his presence is in the holy place, in the most holy place, not in the outer court. Does everybody get this? And this is where people are living in the outer court. So they read the Bible, they go to church once in a while, they throw a couple of bucks out. But they still touch on clean things. They're still full of pride. They still wear the crown of pride. The crown of pride is exchanged in the holy place. Does everybody understand that? It's exchanged where? In the holy place, not in the outer court. Second Thessalonians 2. And then one more scripture. Hallelujah, in verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together in him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is re restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, all signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. But not all of them made it. Why? Because they fell because of pride. See, sanctification means separation. Separation. The first thing we need to be separated from is ourself. Ooh. Verse 14, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. And um, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 5. See, pride always does what it wants to do and doesn't allow God to do what he wants to do. First John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, whoever believed that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. What are his commandments? His commandments are his commands. Everything that the Holy Spirit is telling you, everything that's in the word of God. So it's not written in the word of God. It's the Holy Spirit leading you. Let me share with you something very important. One of the great promoters of pride is called familiar spirits. They promote pride and fear. And I'm going to tell you where pride and fear is, there's always familiar spirits. How do you tell? You can check yourself. Are you easily offended? Are you still protecting yourself? Are you making excuses all the time of what you do or a mistake? Are you willing to accept your mistake and responsibility? Other than that, there's pride there and there's familiar spirits there. See, pride and familiar spirits always flow together. Why? Because you're okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Oh, that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, he's telling me to do this. Oh, no, I didn't do it. No. See, there's no humility. No humility. Where there's no humility, you know that there's pride and there's familiar spirits there. Always. And those familiar spirits will take people into another, another room. <laughs> and it ain't the holy place or the most holy place. And many times, right out of the outer court. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who follows the, or believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So we see here, overcoming the world, you need power. Overcome evil influence, you need power, no matter what it is. And I go to verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Hello? Is rebellion sin? Yeah. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. You know, one of the things he does is keeps himself out of the outer court in the holy place or the most holy place. Does everybody understand that? Not the outer court. You and I are not livers of the outer court. We are lovers of his presence, and that is in the holy and the most holy places. We are to keep ourselves, and then the wicked one can't touch you. He can't touch you. And once they can't touch this. Do, 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 do. No. <laughs> Verse 20. 
And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that promote pride. Amen? Remember, we are in a dispensational season. It's a global event. It's a universal event. God is fulfilling his purpose. And we're to be cooperating in it. What's he doing? He's positioning the body of Christ for something greater than you can imagine. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be protected by your, the blood and that it would grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen.